thank you for the, for the introduction. This will be like the second part of the, of the previous presentation because we are also working in the field of uh, orthology. Uh, my name is Jesual, I come from the University of Murcia in the south of Spain. <coughs> and the idea of this talk is to share with you what uh, happened in the, in the last years in this, in this area. We started working in the field of uh, orthology like six years ago because we were interested in developing applications, combining or interpreting information of, uh, from different orthology resources with uh, information from genetic disorders. We were able to build systems able to to answer queries like the ones that have in the slides, like give the other right genes whose orthodox are associated with diseases with a complete phenotype and, and so on. So we started looking at the different resources available in the, in the community and we said, okay, there are like more than 30 different resources about orthology. So we started to complain and to show and to swear as uh, Spanish people are able to do. And at the end of the day, after complaining and swearing, we went to, to do the job. So we started to study all these, well, not all of these different resources, but, but uh, some of them. And uh, at the end of the day, we realized that there was an increasing interest in, in the biomedical community in working with, uh, with orthodox, that there are many resources available, so many things can be, can be done by, by exploiting this, uh, this data. And according to our experience with the uh, Cares for Orthodox community, it's a quite open community, which is uh, really keen on uh, working with people from other, from other areas like the semantic web community in order to develop better data and knowledge uh, and processes in the area of, uh, of orthology. So we started this uh, overload project whose result was a linked data set and uh, we integrated information from four orthology resources called Imparanoid, Homology and OrthoMCL and uh, we integrated this information with uh, genetic disorders from OMIM, with the NCBI taxonomy, the gene ontology, and the human phenotype uh, ontology. So we built a small ontology, which is the OGO ontology, or the OGO ontology, which just focused on the, on the aspect that were relevant for our, for our research project. So we didn't develop a whole uh, ontology of, uh, of orthology, and one of the good properties of uh, this ontology was the reuse of uh, existing uh, ontology like the CPI taxonomy, the relations ontology, the gene ontology, the evidence called ontology, and the human phenotype ontology would help us in order to, to provide interoperability with, uh, with other resources as well. The process to, to build this uh, new data set was quite the, the standard one. We define a mapping between the data schemas and the ontology, which produce a mapping file. We apply this file over the different datasets in order to get the RDF datasets. Then we inspect it for external datasets, external resources, which would be which would be linked to, to ours. So there was a, a process of data enrichment. We generated the, the linked dataset, and the result was to have a, a node in the link open data cloud. And here I show the external data set that are linked to our, to our data <coughs> from Uniprod, from the BIO to RDF was one of the major linked data sources, and also from the Link Life uh, data project. As my previous colleague has, uh, has mentioned, there is this Case for Orthodox consortium. The last meeting was uh, last year in, in Switzerland. And uh, one of the outcomes of, uh, of this meeting is the letter to, to the editor that will be published in, in Bioinformatics, I think it's already available online. One of the outcomes was the establishment of a group for working on the standardization of, and the normalization of, uh, of formats in, in orthology. So one of the uh, Community standard is this also XML, which is an XML language in order intended to, to be the, the standard for the exchange of the, the, of the data of, about ontology in the, in the community, but unfortunately not many databases are using this format so far. So one of the things we have done in this, uh, in this last year was to uh, develop a, a mapping between this uh, ortho XML format and our ontology in order to be able to transform all these ortho XML datasets into RTF or, or PAL. So, for example, here. Okay. 
there's okay, there are some taxier species, genes, <coughs> author group, this is the author XML format. What we did was to define some kind of mapping between the XML schema and the ontology, for example, just for, for a class, here for mapping the classes of orthologs, which are mapped onto a, onto a property of the, onto, of the ontology, and so on. This was done with the support of uh, one of the tools we have developed in our research group, which is called SWIT, which is an ontology-driven tool for the semantic transformation and integration of, uh, of data. So the idea is that with the help of this tool, you define the mappings between the database or the XML scheme and the ontology, and then the data can be automatically transformed into RDF or all, just so generating these kind of four-star data sets. The mapping is defined by using mapping and identity rules, so there are the kind of uh, basic entity to class, to project property or to data type property rules. And uh, the most interesting one is the, the last kind of, uh, of, of uh, rule, which is the complex transformation patterns, because sometimes when you transform XML data into, into a semantic format, the complete semantics of the data is not expressed in the XML file, and you may need to, to add some, some entities in the, in the transformed data set, and sometimes you don't you don't, do not only want to transform the data to transform an entity from the XML schema or from the database into a, into, a, into all or into RTF, but you want to create a, a series of, of, of actions, a, a, a specific semantic structure in the, in, the, in, the, in the target. And this kind of tool may ensure that only logically consistent content is transformed. In the, in the website we have uh, some use cases, and one is the, the transformation of, uh, of uh, orthodox XML datasets. There is a, a series of uh, environment datasets which have been transformed into, into OWL, and they are available in the, in the website. Also, the mapping file we have produced between um, orthodox XML and our, our ontology. And uh, the next challenges we identify in this, uh, in this area, and that might be the, the subject of, of some activities here in this, uh, in this week in Biohackathon is to develop a, a standard ontology for, for orthology because there is uh, OGO, there is ortho, and there are also some other ontologies that could contribute to, to develop a, a common one for the, for the community like the homology ontology and the comparative data analysis ontology. But what, for example, hasn't been the, uh, covered or or precisely represented in, in the different ontologies or even covered by the, by the different orthology resources is the fact that the evolutionary relation between two, two genes may differ in two different contexts. So in one given context they, might, they can be orthologs and in another context they can be paradox. And this is a source of, uh, in some cases, of misinformation in the, in, in the resources. And there is also a need for getting more resources in standard format because I have shown in the, in the second slide that there are like 36 different resources and maybe only 4 or 5 are using this uh, ortho-XML standard format. So, finally, the acknowledgement to people who have been involved in this effort for the last 5 or 6 years, to the organizers for inviting me to, to be this week here in my hackathon. This is my first visit to, to Japan and to this, to this event and our funding, our funding entity. So thank you. If you have uh, any question, okay, thank you very much.